Welcome to Harrogate, one of the most splendid towns in all of Yorkshire. A historic spa town that blossomed in the 18th and 19th centuries, Harrogate today is home to street after street of gorgeous Victorian architecture and a bustling, affluent community out in full force on this sunny day. On this walk around Harrogate's town centre, we'll pass fascinating landmarks including the town's historic royal pump room, the grand royal baths, the elegant valley gardens and the Old Swan Hotel where the author Agatha Christie mysteriously reappeared after 11 days missing in 1926. However, we begin at the heart of Harrogate, looking up at the town's grand cenotaph, unveiled in 1923 in memory of those who died in the First World War and later the Second World War. As you can see, the cenotaph stands at the heart of an always busy green space at the centre of town, one of a number of gorgeous open spaces that you'll find in Harrogate, particularly in the town's Montpellier Quarter, just a few steps away from here. We'll venture down the hill into Harrogate's exquisite Montpellier Quarter in a few moments, before we later double back around to return to the busy heart of town, home to yet more soaring landmarks like St Peter's Church here and street after street of all the shops you could ask for. Harrogate is without doubt a favourite place to visit for many people from all over Yorkshire. But where exactly in the county would you find this wonderful town? Well, as we can see from this map, Harrogate lies just a stone's throw away from the splendid countryside of the Yorkshire Dales and is situated about 15 miles north of Leeds and 20 miles west of the historic city of York. On any given day, you'll find Harrogate's town centre brimming with both locals and visitors from cities and towns around Yorkshire, who come to do some shopping, to sample the riveting history of Harrogate spas, or simply to have a cup of tea and some cake in the building across the road from us. Here, we're looking at Betty's Tea Rooms, a real Harrogate institution so popular that you'll always see a long line of people waiting outside. Now there are a number of branches of Betty's Tea Rooms in towns elsewhere in North Yorkshire, but the one here in Harrogate was the very first. Betty's founder was actually a Swiss man named Frederick Belmont, who arrived in England in 1910, initially living in Bradford, where he became a self-styled chocolate specialist, and nine years later in 1919 he moved to Harrogate here and opened the tea room business that endures to this day. Now that original Betty's of 1919 was located just a short walk away from the current larger site which opened in 1962, but the tea room today is filled with not only delicious treats but quaint decor and relics from the business's more than a century of much celebrated history. But speaking of history, Harrogate as a whole is a town whose tale is filled with intrigue, discovery and development having emerged from a small, insignificant pair of medieval villages into the elegant and prosperous town we know today. Walking down the hill here, we're taking in a view of the sprawling Montpellier Gardens, bursting with colour from their elegant floral displays and pristinely cut grass. Before the beautiful town centre gardens, however, this was the site of the Stray, a wide area of common land that separated the two historic villages of High Harrogate and Low Harrogate, but it was within the Stray that some of the very first mineral springs in the local area were discovered, which gave birth to the modern spa town of Harrogate. But what were High and Low Harrogate like before the discovery of the waters? Well, as we mentioned, both were extremely small villages that existed as almost entirely separate communities, located a mile apart and with a steep hill in between. In fact, at the time, the two villages of Harrogate were situated within the historic royal forest of Knaresborough, which in the medieval era was used by English royalty as a hunting ground. However, following the discovery of mineral springs in the Stray, both High and Low Harrogate were developed into modern spa towns, but they still remained mostly separate communities until the mid-19th century, when this area separating them now known as the Montpellier Quarter, was first constructed. Work on the Montpellier Quarter here began in the 1860s, and Victorian-era developers chose to build the district to be the most exquisite in an already exquisite spa town, complete with elegant architecture and spacious but characterful shopping parades like Montpellier Street here. Meanwhile, the name Montpellier was deliberately chosen to further increase Harrogate's perceived status, 
intended to capture the refinement of French spa towns, as was popular at the time. Although rather strangely, the original town of Montpellier in the south of France isn't actually a spa town. Nowadays, the Montpellier Quarter is the best place to get a feel for Harrogate as it was in its heyday. The town once upon a time known as the English Spa, and having appealed to a wide variety of wealthy visitors from all over the country, seeking the medicinal benefits of the natural waters here. Alongside those who came to sample Harrogate's waters, the town also became a haven for shopping and socialising, and remained one of the places to be seen well into the early 20th century, before the popularity of the town's spas declined in the aftermath of the First World War. Still, while Harrogate may not draw in so many visitors for its waters, it remains a hugely popular place to visit. Its gorgeous architecture and wide range of cafes, tea rooms and quaint shops, like those we can see on Montpellier Street here, serving as an irresistible draw for many around the region. In fact, Harrogate, owing to the affluence of its residents and its blend of beauty and elegance, is often known to some as the Mayfair of the North, and much like London's Mayfair, Harrogate too is home to many splendid, independently run antique shops that are a delight to peruse. Here, we're walking through Montpellier Mews, a delightful antique market packed to the brim with collector's items of all sorts, and which is also home to vintage clothing stores and yet more tea rooms. Contrary to the main shopping streets back in the heart of town that we'll visit later on in our walk, this part of Harrogate is where you're more likely to find the town's charmingly small-scale retail sphere, these locally run businesses serving as a characterful draw towards the Montpellier Quarter for those visiting town. But as we make our way out of the antique market, when the Montpellier Quarter was in its infancy in the mid-19th century, it was also known as the home of some of the best baths in all of Harrogate. This street is Montpellier Gardens, and between the 1830s and 1890s, it was home to the Montpellier Baths, built atop a strong sulphur spring beneath the ground at this point. When they were opened around 1834, the baths were originally known by a different name, the Crown Baths, as they were situated just beside the enormous Crown Hotel here. One of Harrogate's most famous and oldest hotels, the Crown was originally opened over 300 years ago, becoming the first of what later became the most exclusive and popular part of Harrogate. Built in the village of Low Harrogate, and predating the Montpellier Quarter, the Crown was named in honour of the restoration of the monarchy in 1660, just a few years before it opened, and throughout the 18th century it grew massively, the hotel gaining its own farm, stables, shopping areas and more, effectively becoming its own village. Of course, the draw of Harrogate Springs only grew, and so alongside the Crown, there followed more hotels like the White Hart across the road, originally opened in 1765 and built to its current large scale in 1846. With the birth of the railways and greater wealth in the 19th century, Harrogate's hotels began to see an even greater influx of visitors, among them a number of famous names over the years. The Crown, with all its prestige, lodged guests including the poet Lord Byron and the composer Sir Edward Elgar, both of whom would have come to stay in this area to sample the waters of Harrogate Springs. But what exactly does sampling the waters mean? Well, mineral springs were first discovered in the Harrogate area as far back as 1571. The natural waters beneath the ground found to be rich in iron, sulphur and salt. A couple of hundred years later, in the 18th and particularly 19th centuries, the concept of hydrotherapy began to gain popularity among Britain's upper classes. Either drinking or bathing in pristine mineral waters like those found in Harrogate purported to have great therapeutic benefits that could help reduce stress and even treat a variety of physical ailments too. And so, to cater to those coming to the town to sample the waters, a number of exquisite facilities were built atop Harrogate Springs, the most famous being this, the Royal Pump Room. The Royal Pump Room was built in 1842 to replace an older structure that covered the Old Sulphur Well, a popular well among visitors seeking the most beneficial waters they could find. The vast majority of these visitors, however, were extremely wealthy, and so the Royal Pump Room soon became a place known for its social scene more than its waters. 
The building that we're looking at covered the old sulphur well from the elements, giving visitors a place to drink water while enjoying entertainment inside and chatting away with fellow strangers. Adorning the royal pump room here is the inscription Arx Celebris Fontibus, Harrogate's motto, and which translates from Latin as a citadel famous for its springs. Of course, while springs were discovered here all the way back in the 16th century, it was during the 19th century that Harrogate's star really began to soar, emerging as arguably the most flourishing spa town in Victorian Britain. Famed institutions like the Royal Pump Room here soon became the focal point of the town's thriving social scene, developing an established daily routine for visitors. People would arrive at the Royal Pump Room early in the morning, between 7 and 9 a.m., to drink a few glasses of water drawn from beneath the ground, after which point they'd venture outside for a walk and a bit of gossip with their acquaintances or anybody they'd struck up a rapport with inside. Fortunately, just across the road from the Royal Pump Room, we find the gorgeous Valley Gardens, which cover 17 acres of land in what was once the village of Low Harrogate, and which were laid out in the Victorian era as the perfect place for people to take a stroll after they'd sampled some of the town's waters. Now, as well as beautiful flower arrangements, the Valley Gardens are also home to a number of eye-catching Victorian buildings while inside the park you'll also find an open field where 36 of Harrogate's 88 mineral springs come to the surface. A sprawling park filled with surprises, it's well worth taking a stroll around the Valley Gardens if you have the chance, but we won't quite have time to do so on this walk, because there's a whole lot more for us to see on Harrogate streets. Exiting the Valley Gardens and spinning around to look at the Royal Pump Room, once visitors had taken that morning stroll around the park, many would then head into the centre of town for a spot of shopping, sightseeing or partying. But that wasn't the case for everybody. While Harrogate became a place to see and be seen for many people in the 19th century, the town was still regularly visited by people seeking the benefits of hydrotherapeutic treatment, and they were more often than not too unwell to be waltzing off around the Valley Gardens and then into Harrogate's shopping streets. So while socialites spent most of their days in Harrogate strolling the streets and perusing the shops, those who were genuinely unwell would follow their early morning glass of water with hot bath treatments at their hotels, where they would often have spring water brought to them from the wells. That's why so many hotels were built in Low Harrogate here, close to the densest concentration of mineral springs. And around those hotels, there arose many more facilities like this building, originally the promenade rooms, later a theatre and town hall, and now the exquisite Mercer Art Gallery. However, over time, the popularity of not just drinking, but bathing in Harrogate's waters grew and grew, and this gave rise to a number of large spas, designed both as places of treatment, and as you'd expect, socialising. We'll talk more about that when we pass by the mighty royal baths in a short while, but here we're now walking down Swan Road, so named as it leads down towards the Old Swan Hotel, another of Harrogate's largest and most famous. A dominant presence here on the edge of Low Harrogate, the Old Swan began life around 250 years ago in the late 18th century as a much smaller hotel known as the Swan Inn. But as the spa town grew in popularity through the 19th century, the Old Inn needed to be enlarged and modernised. So in 1878, the local Harrogate Hydropathic Company bought the hotel and rebuilt it on a huge scale, with 200 bedrooms, a dining room with capacity for 300 people, and a variety of facilities centred more around providing guests, or patients as they were often called, with hydropathic treatment. The huge new hotel came to be known as the Swan Hydro, and it was the first of Harrogate's many modern hydropathic institutions, which endured as the town's biggest attractions well into the early 20th century. Now in the early 20th century, the Old Swan was also the site of a rather infamous event, when in 1926 the renowned author Agatha Christie mysteriously appeared here after she had been missing for 11 days. Christie's disappearance was an especially high-profile incident at the time, after she went missing from her family home in Berkshire, and her car was found abandoned by the side of the road in Surrey. Over the course of 11 days that entranced the public like one of her novels, thousands of police officers and volunteers, as well as Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the Sherlock Holmes stories, took part in the search for Christie, 
but eventually she was spotted here in Harrogate, where she had been staying at the Old Swan under the name Tressa Neal, who she said was from Cape Town in South Africa. Next to nothing is known about how Agatha Christie ended up here in Harrogate, nearly 200 miles north of her Berkshire home. But at the time, many people thought that she'd simply staged the whole affair as a publicity stunt, while some doctors and psychiatrists suggested she'd either suffered total memory loss for those 11 days or had a nervous breakdown. But mystery still abounds as to what exactly happened. In Agatha Christie's autobiography written years later, the incident wasn't even mentioned. Now, we've made our way around the corner from the Old Swan Hotel, and we're approaching yet another exquisite and imposing landmark, this building being the Harrogate Council Offices. Built here in 1931 where the old Victoria Baths had previously stood, the council offices were constructed as a replacement for Harrogate's much smaller old town hall, which we saw back on Swan Road, and which is now the Mercer Art Gallery. Of course, by the 1930s, this town had ballooned even further in size, necessitating a much larger home for the town council, although the council eventually moved out of here in 2017. Currently unoccupied but set to be converted for a new use, the old council offices overlook this wonderful green space, known as the Crescent Gardens. Now the Crescent Gardens are in truth in no way shaped like a crescent, rather taking their name from an old 18th century pub known as the Half Moon, and later the Crescent Inn. However, the old pub was demolished in the 1890s to make way for these beautiful Victorian gardens, at the centre of which we find this statue encased in a glass pavilion. Named Cupid and Psyche after the story of Greek mythology, the statue was actually sculpted in 1861 over in Italy, but it was bought by a wealthy Harrogate businessman to display in gardens just a few streets away from here. Later on in life, however, the statue was put into storage and simply forgotten about until 1989, when it was rediscovered, restored and put on display at the centre of the wonderful Crescent Gardens, which are surrounded by always busy streets and yet more of Harrogate's most famous landmarks, in a part of town that connects Low Harrogate with the modern town centre. From here, we'll make our way out of Low Harrogate towards Central Harrogate, but not before we take in a view of this icon of the town, the Royal Baths. Possibly the most exquisite landmark in a town filled to the brim with beautiful buildings, the Royal Baths, built over three years from 1894 to 1897, were once upon a time Harrogate's jewel in the crown, during its heyday as England's most luxurious spa town. In fact, Harrogate's Royal Baths were considered by many to be Europe's premier destination for spa treatments at the turn of the 20th century, and everybody who was anybody, from royalty to politicians and celebrities, would travel to Harrogate to visit the Royal Baths and take the waters. Almost palatial in scale, the Royal Baths were designed in the style of a traditional Turkish bathhouse, following a trend of popularity for Turkish baths in Britain at the end of the 19th century and inside there were a lavish complex of baths, steam rooms and more to accommodate all the rich and famous in pure luxury. But although they were symbolic of the esteem in which Harrogate was held at the time, the royal baths also represented the last hurrah of the so-called English spa, as within just three decades of their opening, Harrogate's popularity gradually began to fade away. But while the traditional spa town of Harrogate began to see decline in the 20th century, the building across the road from us here was key in its return to the fore in another industry. This is the Royal Hall, originally opened back in 1903 as Harrogate's Kursaal, from the German meaning Cure Hall. The name was changed to the Royal Hall upon the advent of the First World War during a wave of anti-German sentiment, but despite its original name, the Kursaal wasn't actually used for any spa treatments, but rather as the venue for grand ceremonies and events, and later on, exhibitions and conferences. Neighbouring the old Kursaal here, meanwhile, is a much larger and much more modern venue, the Harrogate Convention Centre, which opened in 1982 and which quickly shot to international recognition when it hosted that year's Eurovision Song Contest, which was actually won by Germany. Now while Harrogate's streets are still filled with the relics of its heyday as a luxurious spa town, 
Today, the town is widely known as one of the premier locations for the hosting of large conferences and exhibitions, which has included everything from Eurovision to various editions of the Liberal Democrats Party Conference, and most famously, the Harrogate International Festivals, one of the longest-running arts festivals in the country, established in 1966. The festivals held in Harrogate from 1966 were a key part of what helped the town to grow into such a well-established destination for the hosting of conferences and exhibitions. And today, most of Harrogate's largest historic hotels, like the Crown and the White Hart that we saw earlier, also have their own conference halls that serve as a much greater appeal to modern guests than spa treatments. But before it became a great events hosting town, how exactly did Harrogate lose its status as one of Europe's greatest spa towns? Well here, we're making our way onto the steep Parliament Street, which is the perfect place to tell us the story of how Harrogate has changed quite significantly in the last hundred years. Even in the late 19th century, the popularity of drinking Harrogate's waters had begun to decline, although bathing remained hugely popular among the wealthy until around 1914, when the First World War began. In the interwar period, however, more middle-class people began visiting Harrogate's baths, but it wasn't enough to save them from a more fatal decline, and by 1969, most of the royal baths had been closed down, leaving only the Turkish baths across the street from us still in operation. Neighbouring the Turkish baths, meanwhile, are another relic of the past in the form of Harrogate's Winter Gardens, today home to a spacious town centre pub, but which were originally opened back in 1897 as part of the Royal Baths, and which served as an indoor gardens showcasing tropical plants from all over the world. The legacy of the Winter Gardens remains in some form today, with the many exquisite outdoor gardens and floral displays around Harrogate, the town known by some as Britain's Floral Resort. But let's return to the tale of what happened as this town was losing its status as a premier spa resort. Here, we're looking inside the Westminster Arcade, a covered shopping street opened in 1898 as a place for those who had sipped their early morning drink at the Royal Pump Room to then visit for a stroll. In fact, back in the town's heyday, Parliament Street here was always filled with dapper men and elegantly dressed ladies window shopping and gossiping. But the impact of the First World War initially caused the town to fall in popularity among the wealthy while the Second World War led Harrogate to lose its luxurious status almost entirely. However, while the post-war period saw Harrogate having to rely on something other than its waters for the first time in centuries, it was events during the war that actually helped the town to establish its grand events hosting portfolio. That's because during the Second World War, many of Harrogate's huge hotels built for Victorian visitors were actually requisitioned by the British government as a safe haven for government functions away from London, which was of course being heavily targeted by the bombs of the Luftwaffe during the Blitz. As we pass by Fattorini's, a family-run jewellers with a history dating to 1831, which actually makes it the longest established business in Harrogate, the town's shift from hosting wealthy shoppers and hydropathic tourists to government ministries during the Second World War was an important step in its development during the 20th century. The White Hart Hotel and Crown Hotel that we saw over in Low Harrogate played host to the British government's Air Ministry and the Ministry of Works, and along with many other hotels around town, they gained vital experience for the hosting of large-scale conferences, which as we've mentioned, they continue to do to this day. Passing by Betty's Tea Rooms once again, it wasn't just government ministries that the safe haven of Harrogate was prepared to host during the Second World War, as the town was also at the centre of a secret plan to protect the Prime Minister and the Royal Family, if events in London had been a worst-case scenario. We'll talk more about what exactly that once secret plan entailed in a moment, but as you might have noticed, we've come full circle to the point where we started our walk. But there's still more of Harrogate to see, as we now pass by the Cenotaph and venture into the modern centre of town, home to shops, restaurants, theatres and this, St Peter's Church. The only Church of England place of worship in central Harrogate, St Peter's was established in the 1870s, while its imposing tower here on the corner of Cambridge Street was added in 1926. Now for a town of some 75,000 people today, the centre of Harrogate is rather sparse when it comes to churches, a symptom of the fact that, until well into the 19th century, 
the town was still composed of those two largely separate settlements of High and Low Harrogate. The streets on which you'll find most of Harrogate's High Street chains here in the modern centre of town were originally situated in the mostly undeveloped gap between High and Low Harrogate, but they were laid out in their current form during the Victorian era, with modern shops and theatres lining the streets to appeal to visitors flocking to the town's spas and pump rooms. St Peter's Church was built in the newly developed centre of town as the local population grew, but it's about a mile away from here in High Harrogate that you'll actually find the oldest church in the area, Christ Church. Now High Harrogate, like Low Harrogate, exists today more as a residential suburb of the town which is now fully centred around this area, the building of shopping centres, conference venues and most importantly the town's railway station causing the two separate settlements to gradually fuse together into the modern town of Harrogate. But while this central part of town is much newer than the outskirts, there's still plenty of history to be found. One example being the huge Wesley Chapel just in front of us here, which was built 160 years ago in 1862. Though there are relatively few churches in the heart of Harrogate compared with other towns of a similar size, you will still find places of worship for a variety of denominations. Most of the churches built during the town's heyday, both to accommodate a growing population and to cater to visitors who were staying in the area for an elongated period of time and who needed a place to pray. Now as we know, extended stays in Harrogate declined with the impact of the two world wars, but according to a secret plan devised by the British government, this town would have served as a safe haven for both the royal family and the prime minister had things gone south during the second world war. During the Blitz, the decision of King George VI and Prime Minister Winston Churchill to remain in London is said to have served as a huge boost for the nation's morale during the darkest hours of the conflict, one reason that plans for their evacuation, if worst had come to worst, were kept secret. However, according to those plans, if such a dire situation had arisen, the King and other senior members of the royal family would have been brought to the country manor house of Newby Hall, about 10 miles to the north of here, while Winston Churchill would have stayed at Grove House, just a few streets away in High Harrogate, and which stood opposite a secret RAF bunker. Of course things never came to that, and Harrogate remained mostly untouched by the war apart from one stray German bomb which hit the majestic hotel by the convention centre on the street behind the Harrogate Theatre here. Under refurbishment as you can see, the Harrogate Theatre was opened all the way back in 1900, originally under the name the Grand Opera House, and like pretty much every other venue opening in town at the time, it was notoriously lavish, with a spectacular auditorium inside that could house 1300 people quickly catapulting the theatre to the status of a key stop on the circuit for touring performing groups. Now the theatre is one of a number of performing arts venues that are still operating in the centre of Harrogate, and as well as the town's many shopping opportunities, theatre performances also draw in visitors from towns all over the region. But if you're looking to visit Harrogate, what's the best way to get here? Well as we saw from our map at the start of our walk, Harrogate is less than an hour's drive from the cities of Leeds and York but there are plenty of other ways to get here other than by car. Harrogate is home to a busy railway station just a short distance away, and we'll talk more about it in a second, but in the foreground we can also see Harrogate's rather large and as ever exquisite bus station. If you're travelling from somewhere other than Leeds or York, then buses are one of the best ways to get in and out of Harrogate, the town even home to its own bus company, the Harrogate Bus Company which operates some really lovely buses on routes extending to nearby towns and cities like Weatherby and Ripon, as well as villages in the Yorkshire Dales, passing through some of the most beautiful scenery in the whole county. Spinning around now before we take a walk up the pedestrianised Beulah Street, as for railway links, Harrogate Station lies on the line between Leeds and York, and it was opened in 1862 as the first central station in the town a perfect hopping off point for those coming to Harrogate to sample its waters. Today, Harrogate Station, which is now also served occasionally by direct trains to London King's Cross, remains especially important to the town, not only for those coming to visit, but also for those living here, the direct connections to Leeds and York serving an important purpose for many people who live in Harrogate but work in the big cities. In fact, in the 21st century, Harrogate has developed somewhat as a so-called dormitory town for cities like Leeds, Bradford and York, 
People commuting daily to the offices in the big cities, but returning home to this tranquil and affluent spa town, which is regularly voted among the best places to live in Britain. In keeping with its history of luxurious spas, Harrogate today certainly has a reputation in the region for being, for want of a better word, posh. And as one of the most desirable places to live in Yorkshire, it's also one of the most expensive places to live in the county, with house prices often topping £1 million, while Harrogate's priciest property is valued at around £4.5 million. Still, there's no denying that Harrogate really is a lovely place to live with the town full of colour from its gardens and floral displays, and its streets lined with gorgeous architecture, one of the largest examples of which we can see looming in front of us here. This is the Victoria Centre, Harrogate's main shopping centre, which, despite its grand Victorian appearance, was actually built only 30 years ago in 1992, replacing Harrogate's old market hall that had stood here right at the centre of town since 1939. The old market hall, famous for its clock tower, was an iconic landmark in central Harrogate, although the town has never been well known for its markets, as the historic insignificance of High and Low Harrogate meant that locals would typically travel to buy and sell goods at Knaresborough's Market, which is incidentally the longest continually run market in England, first held as long ago as the year 1206. When the market hall made way for the Victoria Shopping Centre, however, this new mall brought yet more shopping opportunities to the popular town of Harrogate, while its striking architecture is fully in keeping with the town's Victorian feel, and you'll even see a number of elegant statues perched on the shopping centre's roof, all reminiscent of the lavish and luxurious buildings that were constructed in Harrogate during its heyday. Now while Harrogate's markets aren't the most famous, this crossroads of Cambridge Street is known as the Marketplace, and you'll still often see stalls set up here particularly during the town's monthly farmer's market, held here on the second Thursday of every month. Owing to the town's popularity with visitors looking to do some shopping, Harrogate has always been looking to expand its retail beyond the high street shops that you see on the roads in the town centre. Of course, many visitors to the town like to venture down towards the Montpellier Quarter for its antique and vintage shops. But while the classic British high street formula is beginning to struggle in the modern day, Harrogate has begun establishing more special markets to be held in the town centre. And today, alongside the monthly farmers market, there's also a new monthly food market on the Crescent Gardens in front of the Royal Baths, and a monthly artisan market held inside the Valley Gardens by the Royal Pump Room. So, there's always something to see and do on a walk around Harrogate's town centre whether that be perusing the shops or market stalls, or simply gazing up at the town's beautiful architecture, and the intriguing statues on the roof of the Victoria Centre here, which depict a variety of customers and staff inside the plaza. Walking away from the marketplace and Victoria Centre down Cross James Street now, Harrogate still has all the trappings of a luxurious spa town and a popular events-based destination, with its many theatres, restaurants, tea rooms, cinemas and more, all providing yet more things to do when you're here. What's more, parts of the town really retain that distinctive Victorian image, with the gorgeous canopies fronting a number of the shops on James Street here, reminiscent of the scene when wealthy patrons of the town's baths and pump rooms would take leisurely strolls down the town's streets. There really is a lot to love about Harrogate, and it's no wonder that the town is so highly rated by residents and visitors alike. But sadly, we're now coming to the end of our walk around this wonderful town, which we'll finish on the courtyard outside the Victoria Centre at the end of James Street here in a couple of minutes. Now James Street here is lined with a number of buildings that were constructed at the end of the 19th century, when Harrogate's popularity was reaching its peak, and the gap between High and Low Harrogate was being rapidly filled in by local developers to take full advantage of the influx of visitors to the town. The Victorian-developed town centre that occupies what was once the open land known as the Stray spreads out further for many more streets, but right at the centre of it all, here we find a monument dedicated to Queen Victoria, which was erected in 1887 in honour of her Golden Jubilee. Of course it was during Victoria's reign that Harrogate, and many of Britain's other spa towns, really flourished, and as well as the statue at the centre of the modern town, the Valley Gardens in Low Harrogate, which we saw earlier, were also opened in 1887 to celebrate Victoria's 50 years on the throne. 
Whether it be down in Low Harrogate by the town's many beautiful Victorian hotels, or on the open plains of the Stray, or even here just a stone's throw from the town's busy train station, Harrogate always looks absolutely splendid, with this lovely courtyard out in front of the Victoria Centre a perfect place to bring our walk of the town to an end. Once upon a time home to two small and insignificant rural villages, Harrogate's rise to national and even international stardom as the most luxurious of spa towns is a fascinating story, and one that provides a riveting context for the town that we know today. While its springs may no longer play the important role they once did, Harrogate in the 21st century is no less exquisite than it was in those days, as one of the loveliest towns in Yorkshire, full of gorgeous architecture, wonderful gardens and centuries of enthralling history. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're now looking forward to visiting Harrogate for yourself in future too.